Jesse Aru Phillips. BBC. Now, as I mentioned, you may not even realise that almost 5 million people in the UK live with diabetes. And at the moment, there is no cure, but there is help on hand for anyone who has a diabetes. And if you don't know already, today is World Diabetes Day. Someone who knows all about this is Vicky Alabraba. She's a community diabetes nurse specialist and she works with Liverpool University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust. And I started by asking her, what are the different types of diabetes? There are two main types of diabetes. Um, The ones that you've heard of would be type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And um, there are also some other rarer types of diabetes, including diabetes during pregnancy, monogenic diabetes and diabetes secondary to pancreatic damage. What was the third one there? So there's type 1, type 2, diabetes during pregnancy. And what was the, the fourth one that you mentioned there? monogenic diabetes so it's a rarer type of diabetes that affects sort of certain genes within the body so genetic mutations okay and then the last one was what diabetes secondary to pancreatic damage or surgery or some people who have pancreatic cancer can develop diabetes as a consequence oh you've already educated me i just thought that there were two type of diabetes and i didn't even know there was you could get diabetes during pregnancy so I suppose, who can all those different ones affect? In Liverpool, there are just shy of 30,000 people over the age of 17 living with diabetes. And across the UK, we know that about 10% of all of those people with diabetes have type 1 diabetes, and approximately 90% have type 2 diabetes. And there are some differences. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition when... The body destroys the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. You often hear about that being diagnosed in children and young adults, but actually you can be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at any age. In type 2 diabetes, there's either not enough insulin being produced or it doesn't work properly. Type 2 diabetes is more common in those people with certain risk factors, um, and these include age, having a family history of diabetes, people who are overweight particularly if we carry the weight around our middle and certain people from different ethnic backgrounds do have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes at a younger age just the important thing to say that although risk factors are associated with type 2 diabetes there are actually some people who have type 2 diabetes who don't have any of those risk factors how do people manage the condition People with type 1 diabetes, um, because they don't make any insulin at all, they require insulin injections from diagnosis because obviously their body doesn't produce any of their own insulin. Now, it's different with type 2 diabetes. Some people may, may be able to manage their blood glucose levels by altering their lifestyle and eating healthily. But often we do use oral medication in the management of type 2 diabetes, and that can be along with injectable treatments and insulin. Having said that, regardless of, you know, the type of diabetes, um, having a healthy diet and being active if you can, giving up smoking and having good blood pressure control and cholesterol is also really important. When I hear diabetes, something that really sticks in my mind, do you, did you ever watch the TV show Brookside? Many, many years ago, yes. So, yeah, so one of the things, I mean, I was young too at that time and I just remember the characters, I think it was Debbie and Damon and it was Debbie who had, she had diabetes and she needed insulin and I just remember a scene when I think Debbie was trying to find insulin in a pharmacy and then basically when uh, Damon found the needles incorrectly thought she was a drug addict so uh, although that's obviously this is in the 80s now but you know how can we now in 2020 educate ourselves you know there's lots of information out there for people to look at on the internet and sometimes obviously it's knowing where to look for the right information so Anyone in Liverpool who is newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, for example, can be referred through to our team. We're Liverpool Diabetes Partnership and we're a collaboration between University Hospitals, NHS Foundation Trust and Mersey Care, the Community NHS Foundation Trust. Obviously, in the recent situation, we've got lots of information online on our website. We've got YouTube channels and we use our social media pages quite a lot as well. 
And for those who maybe aren't into using the internet, we've been sending out education packs. And obviously, just important to say, really, that our service has still been running throughout COVID, although it has been in a different way mostly with our telephone clinics. And we've got a patient advice line and an advice line for healthcare professionals to access as well. But also in Liverpool, we're really lucky. We've got so many other local initiatives. So we've got the Fit For Me campaign. We've got the Healthiness Limited um, group, which do lots of online exercise classes. And then we've got the Undefeatable um, campaign as well. And Diabetes UK, as you may know, is a leading charity for people with diabetes, which has also got some really good resources available online and also in paper version as well. I think it's really important to know that if you do have type 1 diabetes, it's not necessarily caused by poor diet or an unhealthy lifestyle. There's not as much uh, research, is there, in terms of what actually causes type 1 diabetes? And I think that might prevent people from seeking help if they have symptoms Yeah, type 1 diabetes is not related to sort of the risk factors that I mentioned about type 2 diabetes. So it's not related to weight or lifestyle or diet or any of those things. It's an autoimmune condition. Um, Having said that, people with type 2 diabetes may need to take insulin injections at some point in their diabetes journey. But people with type 1 diabetes would always need to start from diagnosis and they would remain on that, obviously, lifelong. And yeah, yeah, it's World Diabetes Day on the 14th of November. The theme is nurses make the difference and definitely do. How important are nurses in helping to manage diabetes? Well, yeah, obviously I'm going to say they're very important because (laughs) I am a diabetes specialist nurse. But um, no, seriously, every year, obviously, the amount of people with diabetes continues to rise. And nurses quite often are the first health professional that a person may see after their diagnosis. So we play quite a key role in obviously diagnosing early to ensure that they get the right treatment quickly, providing that self-management advice, which obviously is so important in the current situation. And obviously education is a massive part of our role. Um, We can also help to tackle some of those risk factors for type 2 diabetes to try and help people preventing the condition in the longer term. And Diabetes UK have quite a good risk um, assessment tool that you can use just on the internet and you can sort of gauge your risk factors as to whether you may um, be at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Fantastic. And I know that the buildings here in the Merseyside region, some of them will be lit up blue, so Town Hall, Cunard Building. And I should say before you go, congratulations on the the award you won this year for being a diabetes pro, a diabetes expert. <laughs> The QIC Diabetes um, Award, and my colleagues secretly nominated me for my work using um, social media in an innovative way to try and raise awareness and support people in Liverpool. We have quite a diverse population, so it means that we have to think of new ways to try and engage with the different communities across our city. So, yeah. Oh, well, it's an honour to speak to you, Vicky. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on to BBC Radio Merseyside and hope all goes well. Oh, thank you very much and thanks for raising the awareness for us. That is Vicky Alabraba, Community Diabetes Specialist Nurse. She works with Liverpool University Hospital's NHS Foundation. And coming up in the next-